So far, we've brought together SwiftUI and Core Image, but the app still isn't terribly useful. Like the sepia tone effect isn't that interesting. To make the whole app better, we're gonna activate this button down here, change filter, to let users customize the filter we're going to apply. And we'll accomplish that with a confirmation dialog. Now on iPhone, this is a list of buttons that slides up from the bottom of the screen, and you can add as many of these things as you want to. It can even scroll if you really need it to. First, we need a property inside our view that will store whether the confirmation dialog is currently showing or not. So I'll say up here, at state, private var, showing filters is false. Next, we can add our buttons using a confirmation dialog modifier, which works identically to alert. Give it a title and a condition to monitor, then a whole bunch of buttons to be shown. Now then watch condition and show the con uh, dialog or the alert as appropriate automatically. So we'll say down somewhere here, after our nav title, for example, we can say uh, there is a confirmation dialog called selector filter is presented will be dollar showing filters. And then we'll put the dialog in here. And now for the change filter method, that's simply gonna say showing filters equals true. Now in terms of what to show in the confirmation dialog, we can create an array of buttons to show and an optional message. And these buttons work just like you do with alert, give it a text title and an action to run when it's selected. For the confirmation dialog in this app, we want users to select from a range of different core image filters to work with. And when they choose one, it should be activated and immediately applied. Apply the current intensity value to it. To make this work, we're gonna write a method that modifies current filter to a new value based on what it shows here, and then calls load image straight away. Now there is a, a wrinkle in our plan, and it's a result of the way Apple wrapped the core image APIs to make them more Swift friendly. The underlying core image API is what we call stringly typed. Not strongly typed, stringly typed. It uses strings to read and write values rather than fixed properties. So rather than invent all new classes for us to use, Apple instead made a whole series of protocols. Now, when we up here assign CI filter sepia tone to current filter, we actually get an object here of the class CI filter that happens to conform to a protocol called CI sepia tone. That protocol exposes the intensity parameter we're using, but internally just maps to a similar call we have down here. We have set value for key. It'll do something like KCI uh, intensity key. There we are. That's what's doing inside here, right? Uh, now, this flexibility actually works in our favor because it means we can write code that works across all filters very well, as long as we're not careful, as long as we are careful, sorry, to not send an invalid value in. Let's just start solving the problem, okay? Up here, this thing forces a sepia tone filter into here. We're gonna modify this so it is only a CI filter. And that code's still fine. Uh, now it's complaining, don't worry, this is not a problem, but again, sepia tone here returns an object to us that conforms to the CI sepia tone protocol, and in this exact type annotation, means we're throwing away some data. We're saying, I don't care that it's a sepia tone filter. I just want some kind of CI filter here. As a result of that, that's what causes this line of code down here to error. There is now no longer an intensity property here. Instead, that's where we have to start saying set value for key again and again and again. And so, I replace this line of code with current filter dot set value our filter intensity for key, and it was KCI input intensity key. Another core image constant value has the same effect of attaching the intensity property directly to a sepia tone filter. And with that code, now we can return back to our confirmation dialog, where I'll be able to change that filter to something else, then call load image to reset everything and apply initial processing. And so we're gonna add a method down here called func set filter to some filter ci filter 
we'll make our current filter and then immediately call load image like so. This does mean that loading the image is triggered every time a filter changes. And if you want to make this thing run a little bit faster, you could split it in two. You could try and uh, load data here and then basically stash this begin image away in another at state property. So handling, loading, and applying a filter separately if you wanted to, just to avoid that extra work. With that in place, we can now go ahead and fill in this dialog here comment with various core image filters. I picked out some I think work well, but there's a whole bunch to explore. Let's do a button crystallize. Crystallize. That will call set filter to CI filter dot crystallize. I'm going to copy and paste a little bit here. Uh, let's do crystallize edges, Gaussian blur, pixelate, sepia tone, unsharp mask, vignette, and then, of course, cancel with a roll of cancel like that. So we've got to change this a little bit. So it was crystallized, it was edges. We'll do, oops, crazy. I folded the code accident. Uh, we'll do uh, Gaussian blur. Behold that. We have pixelate, then our old pal sepia tone then unsharp mask and then finally vignette and they're the same thing going down the way so it's just here dot edges here is gaussian blur here is uh pixelate then sepia tone then unsharp mask and then vignette i've just picked out those from a vast range of core image filters, but you're welcome. Just use code completion, CI filter dot something. Just noodle around, experiment. There are lots to choose from. Try them out. Anyway, but yeah, it's fine. Go ahead and run the app. See what you think. We're getting closer. So I can now import a picture. I'll choose this waterfall again. There's our CPU tone effect. I can adjust the scale of it, intensity, sorry, like that, bigger or stronger, and change this to say, give me a vignette effect. And now it's gonna darken the edges, the corners, based on our intensity value here. So it's working well. Again, don't worry if it's slow, it's just a, a simulator. And now I'll try to change it to be Gaussian blur, which should blur the image. And you'll see that. Big vomit of numbers here. Um, what it's saying is, Gaussian blur doesn't support input intensity. Uh, now, when we had the CI sepia tone restriction for our current filter, we could only send in the value supported by sepia tone intensity, for example. We ditched that. It's just some kind of filter now with values being basically injected in using the set value for key. And now we've lost that safety. Now we've lost the ability to say, is it supported or not, you know? And that thing here has no safety at all, and the Gaussian blur filter does not have an intensity key attached to it, so the app just crashes. To fix this, and to make our single slider do much more work, we're gonna add some more code to read all the valid keys, these valid things and input into the filter here, that we can use with set value for key. And only set the intensity key if it's actually supported by the current filter. Using this approach means we can actually query as many keys as we want to do and set all the ones that are supported, all from a single slider. And so for our sepia tone, it'll set intensity, but for Gaussian blur, it'll set the radius, which is the size of the blur, and so on. Now this conditional approach means our code will work with any filters you choose to apply, which means you can experiment with others safely. Just go through a code completion, try them all out. The only thing to be careful about is you wanna make sure you scale up our intensity, this value here, by a number that makes sense. Like a one pixel blur is the maximum intensity we have right now because it's zero to one. A one pixel blur is basically invisible. And so I'm gonna multiply that by some much large number based simply on trial and error to make it more pronounced. And so rather than writing that, I'm instead gonna say read the input keys from our current filter's input keys and go through them all and say, well, do you support intensity? Do you support radius? Do you support scale, whatever? And apply them all with various multipliers in place. So I'll say, if our input keys contains KCI input intensity key, 
then our current filter dot set value filter intensity for that key kci input intensity key so if we support intensity set intensity i'll uh, copy and paste that a few times if we support the radius key then send that same value in for the radius key if we support a scale key then send it in for the scale key like so now obviously i can say we want a multiplier here for the radius i make it much much bigger i'll do times 200 and for the scale i make it slightly bigger times 10 that's purely trial and error with that in place you can now run your code again and run it safely import any picture you like bring it on in apply your filter with sepia tone here but then say actually i want to try a gaussian blur and you'll get various blurring effects like this is particularly so similar by the way it's much faster on a device uh, we could try a ooh, let's do a crystallize effect there we go it's quite a mild one gets stronger and stronger and stronger beautiful nothing crashed anymore obviously now at this point you can go ahead and just experiment with other filters and see what you can find